All right, guys, so we wanted to do a video um, just based on um, kind of how we're fishing for these fish and kind of do like a rigging video um, because there's not a lot. I mean, a lot of people have different videos and stuff on YouTube that show you what they're using and stuff, but they don't really show you the details of it. And I want to make sure that you guys have the details. So all the spinners that we've been using in this video um, were all just hand-built, okay? And you can literally go to the store and you can buy um, pre-built lures and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I like to build my own because, well, for two reasons. One, because I can, I can choose and I can pick what colors I want to use, what colors I want to try, and, and I can modify as we're on the water. So just, uh, just for example, let me pull one of these off for you guys. Okay, so this is pretty basic, okay? We've got beads, we've got a blade, and we've got hooks that are caught in me. Um, when you buy one of these off the shelf, okay, you can buy them with the slow death hook, okay, which is what this goofy looking red one is. I'm get a close up of that, okay. But you can also uh, you can also buy them with a, a a double hook rig, which is from here back, okay. And these are size four hooks, okay. Even the uh, even the the slow death rig rig is technically a a, a size four hook. Um, I do them a little bit differently. I do them differently for for one reason. The, the basic of reasons is because my hookup ratios where I fish for these can be hard sometimes, especially early in the season. So early in the season, I use three hooks. We are allowed on the Columbia River to use three hooks um, as long as the barbs are pinched down. Okay, and I just buy nice hooks. You know, I don't I don't uh, really have a big uh, uh, preference when it comes to uh, the brand. I do like owners. And I do like Gamagatsu's. Um, you know, just the regulars. Uh, but what I do is I buy the, the size hook that I want to use, and then if they have barbs, I just pinch them down with my pliers, okay? Um, the hooks are, are basically your, your key to, to hookup ratio success, okay? Um, when you're using a slow death hook, okay, if you buy these things by themselves, they're going to come with one hook. That one hook, you're going to thread your worm on or your leech or, you know, your minnow even if you wanted to. The problem with that is that when you have you know, four inches of night crawler hanging off of the back end of this hook. If that fish comes up and swats at it and bites the end of that, you've lost half your worm and you still don't have a fish. So what I started doing is I started putting a double with it. I'd take and I just, you know, this is simply a snell knot that I left the tag in real long and I added another hook to that. Okay. Well, after fishing that for a little bit, I was catching fish, but still seemed like it could have been better. So I went with three. Okay, we are allowed to use three hooks, so why not? Okay, and what I found out through my own research and you know talking to other guys is that with three hooks, it doesn't impart the action of the of the bait. You still get good good roll with your worm, and, and in the midst of that roll, um, you're actually your your hooks aren't flinging out everywhere. Okay, they're actually stationed right behind the worm in line with it. So your your hookup ratio is going to be better. And and in the video of us fishing. Um, all the fish we caught, we caught two fish this day. Um, those two fish were caught using the three hook method and they were all caught on that back hook. Okay. If, if I hadn't had that back hook on, we would have lost both those fish. So don't be afraid to use multiple hook, multiple hooks. Um, like I said, you can buy these rigs off the shelf. Max makes good ones. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different companies out there that make these, these spinning setups, these worm harnesses. Um, I prefer to build them myself because why not? You know, we're out here having fun and, you know, there's nothing better than building, you know, there's not a lot to them. So there's nothing funner than, than building your own rig and then having fish bite those rigs. And, you know, it just makes you feel better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over how I build my rigs. Um, everyone can do this differently. Um, you know, it's, it's completely up to you. I'll show you uh, what goes into it, the knots I use, how I set up the hooks, um, how long the leaders are, and basically everything that you need to know about how I do it. Okay. Now, whether you take this advice or somebody else's, you know, we're all learning here and this is all, you know, I want this to be out there for you guys so that you guys don't have to um, try and guess like I did. Um, it seems like there's not a lot of videos on how to do this for some reason. So um, let's start out with the basics. Okay. 
basics you're gonna need. Um, number one, we need blades. Okay, now there's a lot of different sizes of Colorado blades. There's a lot of different styles of blades. Okay, you got Willow blades, you got Colorado blades, you got, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, I prefer the Colorado blades um, just because of where we fish for these fish on the Columbia. Um, we usually either have really slow current or we have really fast current and they work in both. Okay, you can, you can use a Willow blade, will work a lot better in faster current. Um, but the Colorado works just fine too. So I usually just stick with those. Size wise, um, I think I only got one size on here. Um, these are four and a halfs, okay? Which is usually what I go with. Now you can go bigger, okay? The bigger you go, the harder they're gonna thump, the more attraction you might might have. Um, in the long run, uh, the four and a halfs just seem pretty good. I, I catch fish on them and that's really all that matters now. Whether or not that hookup ratio will be different if you use a smaller blade compared to a, a bigger blade, that's neither here or there. Um, every every situation has its its own area of what size everything needs to be. I run four and a half. Sometimes I'll run a five, but rarely do I ever go smaller than that. And and we seem to get pretty good hookup ratios. Um, you can use any different color. Let's talk about that. Color is a good thing to talk about. So I've got a bunch, uh, a few different colors here. These are just go tos. Okay. The thing that you'll notice about all these colors, okay, let's get the silver one in here too because that is, you know, let's not diss on the silver. Um, one thing you'll notice, there's a lot of greens, there's a lot of, you know, pinks and oranges and that's really about it, okay. Walleye um, have a very good sense of smell. They have very good eyesight in the dark, you know, that's one of the reasons they get their name. But what a lot of people don't know is that they only see in greens and reds, okay? Now, does that mean that they will not bite blue or purple or black? No, not at all, they will. Um, but it's not because they're seeing that color, okay? They're going after it because of, of the shine that it's making coming off the blade. They're going because of the smell of the night crawler or the scent you're using. Maybe it's the beads, um, you know, what you have to understand. Um, they are only seen in two colors, okay? They are colorblind. Um, they are a low light feeding fish too. So, you know, you want something that's gonna be bright, okay? Now I fish strictly greens and pinks and reds, that's it. I do fish silvers and golds, but honestly, I, I, I mean, quite honestly, I don't catch as many fish as I do with a green, a chartreuse and a dark green, or even, you know, when we were out fishing, this was the, the magic blade, okay? This this pink with the, the orange and the green on it. Um, that doesn't mean you can't experiment. You know, I use, uh, we can also use different types of blades. You know, I've got smiley blades that are made by Max. Um, I've got them in all sorts of different sizes and colors. Um, and I do have blues and, and, and I've used blues and they do work. Um, these are really good anytime. You can flatten them out and they'll go nice and uh, they'll spin nice and slow in uh, slow moving current. You can pinch them together and make them more, more of a V. Um, it'll make them work a lot better in fast moving current. Um, these do put off a lot of shine and a lot of flash and, and they do work good. The difference between these and the, and the, the metal blades is simply the, the, the sound. These things are quiet. They don't make any noise, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in, in dirty or stained water or even in low light conditions, they're being attracted be, by that thumping. You know, this thumping thum, 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 as it's spinning is is what's keying them into that bait. And once they get close, they see either the color or they get the scent, and that's really gonna drive them even closer to it. So um, these do work really well. I've got a bunch of different uh, wedding ring set up and different beads that I've made on here um, that I usually only run a slow death hook on um, just because it's a little bit smaller of a presentation. Um, but they do work too. Um, you know, we were out there a few weeks ago and they were biting only on this blue wedding ring setup. That was the only one, only one they were biting on. Now, again, I say that they see in reds and greens. That doesn't mean that blue won't work. Okay. Um, it just means that when you're, when you're building your lures, you want to build something that is going to give you the best chance. Okay. That doesn't mean you can't have something else in your arsenal, but, um, you know, obviously if they're seen in reds and greens and that's a good place to start out. So, Let's get down to it. We've gone over blades. Um, I like, uh, I mean, bead color is completely up to you, but I do like to try and match my blades, okay? I've got pinks and I've got, I've got greens, I've got pinks, i got reds. I've got some glow-in-the-dark ones. Um, I've got some pearl ones. 
all of which are set up specifically to match whatever blade. And when I decide what kind of blade I'm going to use, um, I match beads up to, to, to basically accommodate that color. So let's go ahead and build one. Let's just go to town here. Let's start out with, uh, let's do this, this blade. Okay, this is a four and a half chartreuse with a dark green. Um, let's go ahead and pick out some beads for it. Um, obviously, chartreuse is a good one to have. And I also like the pearl. Now what we want to try and do is we want to try and mimic something, okay? And by mimicking, obviously some kind of a bait fish or something that they're actually keen into. Um, so what I'll do is I'll set up the front and I'll use a few beads, okay? You can go, you can go a little, you can go light. I have not found something that works better than the other. Um, what I have done is simply just put stuff together and try it and most of the time it either works or it doesn't. So let's try four of the chartreuse beads, and then we'll do uh, one of the pearl beads. And what that's going to simulate is more of an eye, okay? And what you can do two, I usually tend to do one above and one below the, the, the blade itself. And then I also will do right where the hook is going to be, I'll do a, a micro bead, which I want to say is a six mil uh, bead. These ones up here are a little bit bigger. I want to say they're, gosh, I want to say they're nine millimeter, but I can't remember. Um, a little bit smaller bead just to protect your knot and keep those big beads from just wearing down on uh, on the knot. Okay, so clevis. There's a couple of different ones to use. Okay, we've got stationary clevises that are basically made for using one thing, one thing only. And then you got quick uh, quick change clevises, which I've been using a lot more of. Quick change clevises are pretty sweet. It allows you to change your blade. Um, as the day goes on and that actually worked out really well for us because we at the time of the video were using one a couple of different colors and once we started catching fish on the, the the same color we started switching all the blades over to that so the quick changes are pretty pretty easy just little plastic things this is all made by Oregon tackle this is local good stuff um, they basically I'll get a close-up here basically there's a little hook in here and in this little hook, it's 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 got like a little top where it's not connected. You're actually going to thread that eyelet on that, okay? And it'll hold it on there. I've never lost a blade using these, so let's just go ahead and let's get this sucker on here. There, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get on, but obviously once it's in there, you don't got to worry about it. You do want to make sure that you put it on the right way. You want to make sure that the hook is facing up and not down. That way, the blade doesn't fall off as it's rolling. goodness figured it don't work right now okay so our blades on there um, these stationary ones here is perfectly fine um, you just won't have the opportunity to change out a blade, which isn't at the end of the world. I mean, you can obviously switch out your, your entire rig and the way that I set them up makes it so where you can do that. So um, I'll, I'll leave that option with you guys. Um, I like the quick changes. I've been using them a lot more lately and that's just, you know, been really good for me. So um, let's talk about line. Okay. I don't really have a, an extreme favorite. If I had to pick a favorite, um, it would probably be I don't know, probably Seaguar. Um, they just make really good fluorocarbon. I always make my leaders uh, or, or my spinner harnesses up with fluorocarbon, period. Um, this time here we're using uh, the CFX P-Line stuff. Uh, this stuff is really good. It's just a little bit cheaper, and I want to try it out. So what I do is I just take an arm's length, okay? And that's probably about, you know, what, four and a half feet or so, give or take, because my arms are short. Um, it just gives you extra to... Uh, to use um, these leaders will be anywhere when it's all said and done from 30 inches down to well i'd say maybe 24 inches down to 18 okay um, honestly that doesn't really matter as much as uh i i think all of mine that i do, that i build are all 24 inches and i don't think that having too too long or too short really makes obviously too short will make a difference but having it a little bit longer doesn't really hurt nothing <clears throat> so this is what we're gonna do we'll start out with our hooks okay Get a couple hooks now. I'm I'm using these uh, these owner hooks. You can use um, the red ones too. Okay, I've got red ones too. Um, it just depends. Uh, depends on what kind of bait I'm trying to mimic. For the time being, we'll just use these size fours. We're going to start off with the bottom one first. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to tie a snell knot. If you don't know how to tie a snell knot, there's plenty of videos on there that will show you how to do it. It is a simple, simple knot. Probably one of the easier knots that there is to tie. And then I usually take my scissors, hook it like this, and just give it a good tug. Okay, once that first snell is done, we can take the tag in and we can cut it short. Okay, from there, I usually space three fingers. Okay, so if you were to take your hooks and go three fingers apart, that's about where I will, that's about where I like my my hook spaced at. Okay, and honestly, that's probably about two and a half inches, I'd say. Okay, once I got that spaced, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this line through, get it all the way through. And then I'm going to go ahead, make sure that I got my three fingers, and I'm going to snell this one. And honestly, this is why I start off with about four feet of line because Nothing ever goes right, and sometimes you might screw one of them up. Again, take your scissors, give it a good, nice tug. Okay, that fluorocarbon, it's it's stiff line, man. You really want to make sure that you tighten that snell down good. Okay, so there's our first two hooks. Okay, now, whether you use a slow death or not, like I said, a lot of people don't use a slow death. A lot of people just use two. You could even just do three of these number fours. Okay, there's there are special ways for rigging that, too. I like to use a slow death hook. I like the way it spins. I don't know if it makes a huge difference on the fish biting but i just like the way it spins and that's good enough for me so we'll go ahead and use a slow death as our third and this one again we're going to go for the three the three fingered rule here okay once we got that figured out kind of where we like and when i'm talking about the top of the shank of the last hook to the bottom of the eyelet good of that okay that's kind of what it's going to look like okay we'll snell that one too Again, get your scissors, a little bit more careful with the slow death hook because it is a longer hook. Get tightened down good. Okay, once we have our hooks in place, the hard part's done. At this point, we get to have fun. And we get to go to town with different bead combinations. Now, you can do pinks and greens and blues and greens. I mean, you can do whatever combination you want. I like to, one way or another, try and mimic something. Okay, now we're going to start off with our small six millimeter bead. Okay, I'm using a glow-in-the-dark one. You could use a pink one. I got pink ones in there too. And again, what that bead is doing is simply protecting our knot, our top of our hook. Okay, now we use a snell knot so that our knot isn't up on top of there. Okay, that that's one of the other added protections. But I'm going to use that small bead just to keep every all the the main weight off from sliding over the eye of that hook. Okay, so we start off with that small six millimeter bead, and we just roll into our other ones. Um, I like to use anywhere from four. To six beads depending on you know how I'm feeling at the time we're gonna do four greens and then we're gonna roll into a pearl and that pearl I'm almost gonna make it act as an eye so let's say we're trying to uh, mimic a shad or something which is possible they'll eat that or maybe even a you know some a, a squawfish or something so there's our first setup hooks plus the beads okay we got five beads on there right now okay well, six considering that little tiny one too. From there, we're gonna go ahead and put on our, our blade that we already got hooked up to our quick change clevis. Making sure that the color of the blade is facing up. Okay, there's that part. Now, this is one thing that I have always stressed to myself, okay? When this is sitting flush, I want enough beads to where the top, or excuse me, the bottom of my blade is not touching a hook. Okay, so if this was down like this, that would be no bueno for me. I don't want that blade coming in contact with that hook and clacking or making noises. I want it completely up. Keep in mind, it's going to be spinning even so. I don't want it even close to that. So I got it spaced out with that many beads for a reason. Okay, that way it doesn't come in contact with my hook shank. Okay, from, the from there, I always put a bead on top. 
Okay, and I do that just for seaweed, another junk that might come down and get on top of that, maybe to keep the blade spinning. It's just a little protection for the top of the clevis and the blade. We'll use another pearl on for that. And that is basically my rig. Now, you can sauce this up however you like. You can use different colored beads. Like I said, I've got I've got pinks and I've got reds and, and quite honestly, if you look at my my get up here we've got a lot of different you know i've got reds and pinks and pinks and greens i mean anything you know this is this is your chance to really experiment um, in the end i simply do this i grab the top of my uh or excuse me rather i grab the bottom of my thing and i just go an arm's length okay that arm's length is usually about 24 inches okay i'm going to take that and i'm going to tie on a barrel swivel okay these are size fives which is plenty big enough what this does is allows me to switch baits around as I choose okay so if we decide that blades or colors or whatever is not working correctly I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my uh, actual rod itself I'm gonna have a snap swivel on it to where I can change this entire setup off if I want okay it also makes it easy at the end of the day now I'm just gonna tie a very simple fisherman's loop knot, okay, a clinch knot, that's all it needs to be. Make sure we're wetting that knot down for a little bit more strength. Okay, that's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be anything more than that. And then we're gonna cut off our tag end. At this point, you know, roll that sucker up and put it on your uh, put it on your little harness, okay? You guys are set up and ready to go. So that is my version of a crawler harness. Again. Um, colors are completely optional. You guys can do whatever you want. Um, just keep in mind, you know, one thing I didn't I didn't learn after a long time that they only see in reds and greens. And believe me, there's you know you'll always have that one boat when you're out there fishing that will have all the guys on it that are catching the most fish. You know, pay attention to what they're doing. Carry binoculars with you. You know, I the one boat that we were watching that was catching the most fish the first time I ever went walleye fishing. Every one of them had green on. And I didn't really think too much of it because people told me that blue was working, and so we were using blue all day and come to find out green was working better you know and that's really what made the biggest difference um, so don't be afraid to um, try different different colors um, utilize the quick change blades it does work it does help um, you can match things up uh, a lot better um, also think about water clarity okay water clarity is a big deal you know if you've got muddy dirty stained water you're going to want something brighter okay um, cloud cover even better for fishing uh, but you want, might want something with a little more flash. You know, this blade here's got gold on the backside. Some of them have silver too. You know, I use the gold uh, on the on the, the the brighter days. Okay, it gives a little more flash. I use silver on the cloudier days. The silver seems to put out the the better flash during the cloudier days. Um, also, you want to think about speed of water. If you're fishing a river uh, like we're doing up here in Oregon, you know, we're fishing uh, the Columbia. Um, even on the upper stretches where the dams are. You still have a lot of current, okay? Especially if the dams are open. If the dams are open, then you're fighting the current no matter what. Um, so you want to match your blade to that specific type of water too. Um, like I said, I like using the Colorado blades even in fast water. It seems like they work. You know, we still catch fish. Um, you know, and I'm still experimenting too. You know, that's that's the fun of fishing. Um, if you're fishing a pond or a lake, well, not a pond, but if you're fishing a big lake, especially the guys that are up up in the Midwest. Uh, uh, you might not necessarily need to worry about current so much. You might have a flat, calm day where you're just trolling at that 1.5 and you're just nailing stuff. So don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to uh, try different colors. Um, that's why the quick change blades come in handy. That's why uh, putting a barrel swivel on the end of your thing comes in handy. Because at any minute, whether I've tried 100 blades or not, maybe it's the beads that aren't working. You know, I can really quick and easy just change out to another setup, a whole new harness in itself. Um, so one thing I want to show you guys before we end this is how I thread a worm on and grab my my jacket. I did bring I didn't bring some real worms because you know that's just gonna make a mess. But I did bring some fake worms and uh, I'll kind of show you how we uh, we harness this bad boy up and kind of how it works. So this is just a, a fake sink or whatever, but you guys will get the gist of it. So pretty simple, okay? On all worms, okay, on night crawlers. About halfway back from the head, you're gonna find the little collar, right? Okay, that little, you know, off-colored collar looking thing, okay? That is one of the keys to threading a slow death hook, okay? So let's say that my finger was on that collar, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my worm 
after I've beat it on the head and stunned it, I'm going to thread my worm all the way down until I get to that collar. Okay. Once I've gotten to said collar, at that point, I'll go ahead and I'll pop that hook out. Okay. And then I'll just thread the rest of the worm up. Now, keep in mind, we've used snell knots. So we've got line that hangs down. Okay. What you can do, two things you can do. One, you can either pull your worm down a little bit. Okay. Like that. So that those lines are straight back. Or what I found is kind of fun to do is you can actually, whoops. actually take your hooks and just go right through the side starting with your bottom hook take it right through and then let this one fall right behind it and it'll go through the same hole and throw it down like that that way it doesn't matter how far up you put that worm you can take it all the way up the line your hooks will still be straight back on it and that that seems to help too keep in mind that after a little bit those you know that line might wear out of your your night crawler um, don't be afraid to use the fake stuff man um, we found out when we were up there fishing that the fake stuff was all that was getting bit um, berkeley galt man it's good stuff and uh, i heard it from another guy that uh that fish were loving it and we tried it and dude it, it worked really well so you see how on a regular night crawler the back of the worm might come down past this bottom hook um, some of our earthworms are pretty long but as this thing's spinning and it's hard to show you in here as this worm is twirling, okay, these hooks aren't flailed out, okay? They are actually in line. So you don't got to worry about, you know, like if you're a salmon fisherman, you're used to taking that bottom hook and, and hooking it in. Or if you're using a double rig, you might be used to taking the bottom hook and hooking it in. With this setup, with the slow death hook, you don't have to do that, which is another one of the reasons I don't, I, I like using the slow death hook because it's going to put spin on the worm as well as on the, the spinner itself. And these hooks, I don't have to worry about hooking to the bottom of that worm. They're just going to lay there nice and in line, and they'll be there when that fish comes to grab it. So that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for, uh, for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Hope to see you guys again soon.